Has life ever existed on Mars? And could life have survived and evolved for billions of years? In their insatiable quest to find life in other parts of the universe, humans have often looked at the Red Planet. After all, Mars is a rocky planet like Earth, orbiting the Sun and at a distance where water could have been present in the past. We are unlikely to find Martians on Mars, but tiny traces of ancient rivers, lakes or even oceans could give us fresh clues about whether some sort of life could have developed. Finding these fresh clues is exactly what the ExoMars mission is all about. It aims at sending a rover to the Red Planet to explore and retrieve samples from its soil. After many years of testing and fine-tuning, the rover was due to be launched into space in 2022. But events on Earth thwarted these plans. The war in Ukraine uh, has had a massive impact on, uh, on our work. Pietro is the ExoMars rover manager for ESA. He's come to oversee some tests in Turin, where the rover and its Earth twin are housed. We were ready to go to the um, launch campaign for ExoMars, and we had all of a sudden to stop and to reconsider our plans. So I suppose it's been quite tough for the teams as well. Yes, uh, for the team it's been very, very difficult to, to digest this, uh, this decision because they've been working uh, very hard in the last years and it was, uh, it was indeed difficult also from a human perspective. But of course they understand the political implications, so they, they manage to, to, let's say, reset and uh, to start working on a new enterprise, which is uh, the ExoMars Rover in Franklin mission. So what are the new plans really for ExoMars? The new plans are uh, to uh, build a new lander, this time an European lander. The previous one was built also with the help of European industry, but was uh, uh, mainly uh, Russian made. This time we will be building it completely in Europe with some contribution from NASA that we might need for the, the propulsion system. So we'll have a new European lander, we'll have a, a refurbished rover. What's the timeline? When are we, can we hope that the, the rover will be launched? We are now targeting a new launch opportunity in October 2028. Mm -hmm. it cannot be earlier because we need time to build, uh, to redesign and build and, and requalify the, the lander. So there is a certain time that is needed for that. Uh, we, don't go, we don't want to go beyond this date because then the environmental conditions on Mars are not favorable for uh, the mission that we want to do with the rover. Despite these turbulent times, preparatory activities for a trip to Mars never really stopped and tests are picking up again in this building here, that's the home of Amalia, the Earth twin of a real rover. Amalia lives by the Mars Yard, a large hangar filled with 140 tons of soil that simulates the conditions the rover will encounter on Mars. Amalia is a replica of a real rover. It enables engineers to rehearse various scenarios that the real rover might encounter in a harsh Martian environment, helping them to make key decisions. Last year, we came to this very same spot to film some peculiar moves called wheel walking, a unique locomotion system enabling the rover to overcome difficult terrains. But this year, it's a drilling test that keeps the team busy. An exciting time for all of them after working hard to reshape the ExoMars mission. So Andrea, we met about a year ago during the wheel walking tests and of course a lot has happened since then. So how did your team handle the events on Earth? Well, it was of course tough. So we were uh, on the climax. We were uh, at the end of a big test campaign, both on the GTM, on the Amalia side and on the protoflight model for the preparation for the, for the transfer to, to the launch site in Baikonur. 
So uh, after the climax, there was, uh, uh, of course, the team faced some difficulty to accept the, um, the, the, the change of paradigm of the new mission. But then we, we took it as an opportunity. The team has been renewed. We have a lot of newcomers with a, with a big, uh, uh, let's say, positive spirit. And uh, uh, we are facing, again, this as, uh, as a new challenge that we are used to, to manage. Okay, and so what, what is going to happen then in the next few months, few years? The, mis the mission is changing slightly, so what are your plans? The rover was accepted and qualified for the 2022 scenario. Uh, we are now uh, facing uh, a new uh, mission scenario and uh, the idea is to upgrade the rover in order to be capable to survive what is called the global dust storm season, so a bad season uh, on Mars. Uh, that uh, um, with a lot of dust suspended. So uh, we, we are going to implement uh, all the means that are necessary to survive such environment, like uh, tiltable solar arrays, uh, larger part of uh, array choose, so uh, nuclear power to keep the rover warm. Of course, we need uh, the time to, 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 to build all what is necessary to build around the rover. And uh, that is uh, probably going to take four, six years. And uh, that is the time frame we have uh, to, to upgrade the rover and to make it more attracting for, uh, for, uh, for the engineering scientific community. So I have one very simple last question is, of course, we've got the rover up there and it's hanging from the ceiling. So I know there's something about gravity on Mars that's involved. So uh, what we need to uh, simulate on Earth is the same gravity as on Mars, that is one third. So we uh, created a ground support equipment, uh, that is the rover floating device, uh, that basically pulls the rover uh, of uh, two thirds of its weight. And uh, through that uh, we were capable to really demonstrate uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the functionalities of mobility and drilling in a representative environment. The next day, the drilling test is finally ready to begin. OK, does it rock? We are ready to send the commands to collect the sample at 1.7 meter depth. I will give it on my mark. So, 3, 2, 1, mark. The Earth Twin Rover will try and drill into a clay stone at a depth of 1.7 meters much deeper than anything other rovers have ever attempted on Mars. Such a depth will offer access, it is hoped, to organic material from 4 billion years ago, when conditions on the surface of Mars were more like those on the infant Earth. Enough to make engineers feel a bit nervous. So this is the control room where engineers and scientists are sending commands to the rover and receiving its data back. And as you can see from the number of people and computers, there's a rather large amount of information to handle. Tazi Rock, can you please report the execution of the command status, please? We are standing by. The test is conducted in real time. Commands are sent to the rover, but it takes hours before it starts moving, the same time it will take for data to travel from Earth to the Mars surface. After many hours of commanding and data analysis, the drill is finally retracted. The sample is then dropped into a drawer, which withdraws and deposits it into a crushing station. The resulting powder is distributed to ovens and containers to perform the scientific analysis on Mars. The rover is a real laboratory on wheels. It has been a very long uh, testing day. The test has been very, very successful. We have been able to collect the sample at 1.7 meter. We have been able to take it out. And now the sample has been delivered to the rover for further processing. So we are very, very happy and very proud of the performances of the rover. While its Earth twin is being submitted to further test, the real rover, the one that is due to fly to Mars, is carefully stored in an ultra-clean room located in this building here. The rover is waiting for further pampering in one of the cleanest places on Earth. Entering that room was no easy task when we visited last year. Strict hygiene measures and layers of protective clothes were, and still are, in place. 
entering clean room and then a ultra clean room to see something that's gonna touch the soil of Mars and uh, feel pretty lucky actually. Let's go. Welcome to the clean room, the antechamber to the ultra clean room. Scientists working here only wear one layer of protective clothes and they enjoy a wonderful view over the real rover, carefully stored behind thick glass walls. So all the material that's going to go inside the ultra clean room needs to be thoroughly cleaned and that's going to take at least an hour. Chemical agents are used to clean the equipment, but anything located inside the ultra clean room itself went through numerous cleaning cycles, including dry heat treatment. Our host Enrico Andrea Nistico is a planetary protection engineer, and as his job title suggests, he's here to make sure we, like all personnel working here, respect the most stringent rules. Protecting other planets from terrestrial contamination is actually a legal obligation under the UN Outer Space Treaty. That's worth another layer of protective garment. Francesco has done all the meticulous preparation again and it's taken him about an hour and is now finally filming the real rover in its ultra clean room. The buzzing activity we witnessed in that room last year has somehow subdued. The Rosalind Franklin rover is now patiently waiting in its ultra clean room for some big decisions to come. The road to launch, now planned for 2028, remains long indeed. Europeans need to devise new ways to develop a lander and upgrade all the existing hard and software. There are surely many more exciting episodes to come in the long journey to Mars.